Power BI's card visuals by Excel doesn't at the moment. I'm going to show you how to make these and make them look really cool and make them dependent on selections from the user. Even the flags can change like that. So my name is Dave and I'm going to have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Power BI, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using tech of the workplace that I'm covering on my channel. So check out my other videos if you like what you see. All right, so let's get started. So to start with, let me scroll down and show you three ways that you can get from a cell into a kind of shape object. So the first one is if you go to insert and you choose shapes and then you choose, I like this one for these kind of cards, you can actually get data from a cell in here that changes dynamically. So if I write in the formula bar equal to and I click on a cell, then it will show me that number. And then I can just kind of change the color to something that I like. I can also uh, make it bigger like I usually would and change center it, et cetera, and do all that stuff they usually would. And this is dependent on slices because if this cell changes, then this cell will also change. So it's linked to a formula. Um, now what you can't do is combine and do multiple formulas. So you can't write, for example, an if formula or something in here, it just won't work. You need to have all your formulas in the Excel grid before you bring it into here. And this can just link to one cell. Uh, so a couple of other ways. So here we have a color that's changed by conditional formatting. I'll show you how to do later on. A second way to link it is if you right click and you copy it. And then in paste, you go to this one that says paste as linked picture. And there you go. Now it's given me this that I can put there. And this will change depending on when this one changes. So that's how you can get kind of the color. Um, and another way is this is for the flag. You can right click on an image if it's a picture inside a cell, which is a brand new feature and go to picture in cell and choose create reference. And then this can be linked to that. So I'm going to cut that and paste it in here. And now I have three different objects. And just to show you that these are linked to the slicer, if I click around, I can change the color of this and the number value. And if I click on the country, it will change the flag. So they are now linked to the slicer because of how I've constructed my pivot tables. Now I will show you how to do things. This is called a spark line, the line in the chart, how to get these arrows and this kind of change symbol and how to get this color to change depending on what's in it, as well as the flag. But if you just want to know how to get the different things in the objects, then that's how you do it. So let's get started with this. And I'm going to select my data, control A, and go to insert pivot table. Pivot tables are key to this. I have another video where I talk about the pivot table basics. That I'll link to in this video if that's what you're after. But they are the best way to do something like this. So we're going to start off by getting the income by country. So these are the five different countries that we have. And we're going to create something that's off of the first one. So I'm also going to right click on country and choose add a slicer. And then I'm going to click on one. I'm going to kind of force the user to pick one. I can't force them, but I'm going to kind of try and insinuate it so that they do just pick the one thing. So uh, this is a slicer that allows you to change what's in an object depending on what. And then I need to get the flag that I will do later on. So first, let's have the total for USA. So I'm going to insert a shape. And as I said, this one, I'm going to choose a kind of square one. And then in this one, now if you type in equals directly here and choose something, it will not work. You need to do it from the formula bar. But I actually will go to the formula bar and then choose equals and choose the one next to it, uh, which is currently zero. And then if I link this one, it will show me that same number. Uh, now, it does get a little bit buggy when you change the color, I find. So if I change this to white, uh, then it sometimes will glow and I need, might need to change it again. Here it's worked. And then I'm going to change the font and also make that centered. Perfect. Now, why do I do it linked to this cell? Because I always like to have commas. And to have commas, we need to kind of change this to a text value that has a pre-formatted thing. So I'm going to show you a very important function for this whole thing, which is the text function. So if you do equals text and then tab to open your brackets, you have value and then format text. So I'm going to choose this one, comma. I'm going to choose in speech marks. That one, that one, that one, zero. So hash, comma, hash, hash, zero. 
and that will put it like that. Now this is the same annotation that you get to in the number formatting. You go to number format and custom, then it will show you like that. So that is essentially what I'm doing. If you wanna do others, you can learn from them and get them over there. But that is the one that I'm gonna do it. I also think it's super important for percentages, more important than for this, but I always like to use my commas. So um, in general, when you are linking to a cell, link to a formula, that way it's more flexible to change later on. But here's the issue that I have with it. So if I right click and I cut this and I paste it here, then it's currently linking to this in this sheet. So that's no good. Another tip is you also want to have it in another sheet when you start. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to view and new window. This will create a second window of the same workbook. So now uh, I can edit something in one and it will edit in the other one. My shortcut windows and right key and then windows and left key will put them both like that next to each other. And just to show you, if you choose to change the color here, it will change there in real time because they are essentially the same thing. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to this one and I'm gonna choose cards here and also rename it here. And then I'm going to insert a shape and choose the text box like we had done before. Hold down shift to make sure it's a perfectly aligned square with rounded edges. And then in the formula bar, I'm gonna write equals and click on that same cell. And now it is showing me the link to that, which means I can move this across worksheets. The other way it has to remain in the same worksheet. All right, so I've kind of pasted these here so I can remember what I'm doing as I go through more things. Okay, so next up, let's do the uh, caption. So here, you can actually rename the caption in a pivot table by typing over it. You can't have the exact same word, but instead of income, I'm gonna call it sales, like that. And then I'm going to insert, still in the other sheet, a text box. And I'm gonna write equals in the formula bar, not in the text box, equal to this one. And if, Text block is essentially pretty much the same as a shape, but in Excel, it puts it with uh, white like that. I obviously want this to be transparent. So I'm going to edit that here to make it no fill and to make it no outline. All right, I'll, I'll deal with the formatting later. For now, I'll just get the elements because I want my full ribbon for that. Next up, I want to get my flag. Now the flag is a little bit tricky. We need to do for the flag is you need to get the list of unique countries and then convert them to data types. So I'm gonna write the function equals unique, select all of these, close my brackets, and then I can copy these, paste them as values. And then I can convert these in the data tab into something called data types and geography. So after that, I can click on the plus button and I can extract all really cool things like the life expectancy, the population, etc. I'm going to just take the flag and then in this cell next to it, I'm going to write equals xlookup. xlookup is like a vlookup, but much better. This value, comma, my lookup array will be the column for the country and my return array will be the column for the flag. I close my brackets and I get that. So that is USA, and just to show you, if it changes, then it changes in that cell. So it's important to do this with a lookup. You don't have to do this in your source data, although you can. And then to get this one, I'm going to right click, picture in cell, and create reference. I'm going to cut this, and then here I'm going to paste it. And then put it there, and just to show you, if I click the slicer, the number changes and also the flag changes. All right, so we've got those. Next up, we're gonna want to get the percent changes. So I've also got date and I'm going to copy this pivot table. I'm going to paste it here, control V, and I'm going to change what's in this pivot table to instead of country, I'm going to choose date and 
right click and in this case i'm going to go to group and i only need months i don't need days you don't have to do that but it does give you a bit of a cleaner approach i'm also going to sort it so that december the most recent is on top so i'm going to right click and i'm going to sort newest to oldest like that because you always want the most recent one on top um, otherwise it could fluctuate if there are seven months then the most recent one will not be over here the most recent one will be somewhere else so to get the most recent one on top it's easiest to do it that way by the way um if the other thing didn't work for you with the slicer changing this number then you need to do one thing to change it so if i write equals that in a normal pivot table and i drag it down it will just give me the same number because it uses this get pivot data, which is hard coded. Um, I hate this. I find this really annoying. So I always disable it. The way to do that, you just need to do this once file and then options. And then if you go to formulas, you can just untick this one. Use get pivot data functions for pivot table references. Press OK. And then you can write here and it just gives you the, the reference, whatever you like it to be. So in this case, I'm going to do equals this one divided by this one minus one. So that is the month on month change is 19.9%. And I'm going to change that to 8% like this, 20%. And now if I click on the different countries, it will show me sometimes plus, sometimes minus. So I need to manipulate this so that it shows me something like this, 94% and then up or down and the arrow changes. And then I'm also going to add this change symbol. So this one's a little bit tricky. Um, what we need to do is we're going to go to insert and then in symbols, we're going to insert a few things. So I'm going to need this up arrow, double click that, this down arrow, double click that, and this change symbol, double click that one. Okay, close. So I move them up to a different thing. I'm going to copy them. Then in this cell, I'm going to write equals a few functions, apps will just give me the absolute value. So that that means if I change it, it will still give me a positive number. And then I'm going to say, and to join with some text, if this number is greater than or equal to zero, then return, if I control V, what I pasted before, that, but put it in speech marks and get that change. Otherwise, control V, and I need the down arrow change in speech marks like this. Close my brackets, and that's how it looks. So I do want to format it as text like the other way around. So in, before apps, I'm going to write text, and then that one, and then comma. This one is going to be 0% in speech marks. If you want to know why I've chosen these then you can just kind of follow it in the number formats like I showed you earlier. Get it from there. So that is going to show me a different one, whether it's up or a down arrow, as you can see, it's changing there. So that's all very well and good. Let's get this into another text box. So I'm going to take this existing text box and I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to paste it. And then in this one, in, I'm going to supersede that now if you write equals after you've already edited it puts it up here and not in the text box so that will work fine and there we go so now i've got these ones i still need to get that one uh, that one's pretty easy Control c Control v there you go now i've pasted in this one again and i'm going to say equals just the last month and that will also always be the top month because of how we've done it so now I've got these ones. So I'm left with how to do this chart and how to do this. What you do is you use something called a spark line. So insert spark line, line chart, really, really great feature, super easy to use. Whereas the data range, just select this like that and then press okay. So to get this one, I copy it and I click back in here and then I'm going to paste as linked picture, only in this menu, I believe. And there you go, it is a linked picture. Now, if you get to the spark line, you can go to spark line up here and you can change things like the color, make that white or make that kind of a gray color like this. And then it will show it to you, the output like that. The uh, 
The quality is a little bit blurry, so do kind of be careful with it. Don't make it too big. And I haven't found a way around that, but it does work dynamically. So if I click on this one, we're going to see the spark line change, which is pretty cool. All right. Next up, we have this one that changes color from red to green. So to do that, I'm going to get a column and make it very, very slim. So kind of like that. Usually I like to go for exactly the same. So a square, which is like that, 25 pixels. And I'm going to go to conditional formatting. And then I'm going to go to a new rule. So I'm going to say use a formula to predict. And I'm going to say equals this cell greater than or equal to zero format. I'm going to choose a green color. I'm going to press OK. I'm going to choose the same one again. So new rule equals this one less than zero. Then in format, I'm going to choose the fill to be a kind of red color. In more colors, I'm going to choose this one. Perfect. Press OK. And OK again. And there we have it. And now it's currently red. And here, if I change it, it changes to green. So I'm going to do the same as before. I'm going to copy this. And in this one, I'm going to paste as a linked picture. Sometimes this doesn't work and it gives you an error. But if you keep trying, eventually it will work. All right. So now we've got pretty much all the elements. Uh, well, it's just this that's remaining, the icon. So to get the icon, I'm going to make this full screen. I'm going to go to insert and in icons, I'm going to choose something that is relevant. So I'm going to choose sales is more like cash. So let's go for this one, insert. So where you have a picture like this, you can usually place in a cell by right clicking and choosing place in cell. And then it will go the other way around. It will go inside the cell. But what I want to do is just have this fixed. So I'm just going to do it this way. Uh, at the time of making this video, icons you cannot place in cells. They're treated a little bit differently to pictures. Uh, you can, though, very easily change the complete color of it. I usually do white fill and a black outline. I find that works quite neatly. And there you go. So after that, it's really just a question of arranging. So next, let's fetch our slices. So in the data tab, I already have one slicer, but I'm going to click on there. I'm going to choose name and add a slicer. I can also choose date, right click, and add as timeline, like that. So next up, what I'm going to do is make sure that these are linked to all the pivot tables. In this case, I've just got two, but often you'll have more. So click on timeline and choose report connections and then just tick on both of the pivot tables. You can rename your pivot tables if you want to use them long term by clicking on them and then choosing the pivot table analyze tab and renaming it here. So I'm going to say sales by month. And this one, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to go to slicer and I'm going to go report connections and tick the sales by month. Control click these three and copy, take them to the cards, paste. And now they should work for all the data. So next up is to make sure they're perfectly aligned like this. So what you can do is you can select every object in one and group it. That's probably recommended. And in the Home tab in Find and Select, Select Objects will help you with this because you can just kind of draw around it. And that will select everything there. And then if you go to Shape, Format, and Group, and Group, that will group them as one item. And if you do that with these three, you can control click all of these. And then you can go to align and you can go to align top. And then you can go to align and distribute horizontally. I love this feature, especially because unlike PowerPoint, you don't have the lines, the red lines telling you when you are aligned or not. All right. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that video. That is uh, how to make very, very complex ones as well as very simple ones. My name is David. I'm on tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, I'm copying on my channel, so check out my other videos. Thanks for watching.